Ladies and gentlemen, our focus today is focus on you. People come and go. This simple phrase holds within it the key to unlocking the infinite potential that resides within each and every one of you. Let us begin by understanding what it truly means to focus on yourself. In the world of appearances, it may seem selfish or egotistical to direct your attention inward. But I tell you, it is the most divine and necessary act you can perform. You see, you are not merely the physical body you inhabit or the personality you present to the world. You are, in essence, pure consciousness, the very substance of God himself. When you focus on yourself, you are not focusing on the limited mortal self that is subject to the whims of the external world. No. You are directing your attention to the infinite immortal self that is one with the creative power of the universe. This self is the I am, the eternal presence that exists beyond time and space. Now, you may ask, but Neville, what about the people in our lives? Are we to ignore them? And to this, I say, people come and go in the world of Caesar, but in the realm of imagination, you are the author of all relationships. Every person in your life is but a reflection of your own consciousness, playing a role in the grand drama of your creation. There's no one to change but self. As you focus on yourself, as you cultivate your imagination and align it with your desires, the world around you, including the people in it, must conform to your new concept of self. It is law. Consider for a moment the story of the prodigal son. He left his father's house, wandering in search of fulfillment in the external world. But it was only when he remembered who he truly was, when he focused on his true identity as the beloved son, that he was able to return home and claim his inheritance. You, my dear friends, are on a similar journey. You have wandered in the world of effects, seeking validation and fulfillment from others. But I tell you, the kingdom is within you. As you turn your attention inward, as you focus on the divine self within, you will find that all you have ever sought is already yours. Now let us delve deeper into the nature of this focus. When I speak of focusing on yourself, I'm not referring to mere positive thinking or affirmations. I'm speaking of a profound shift in consciousness, a complete reorientation of your entire being towards your desired state. This focus is achieved through the power of imagination. For imagination is not a flight of fancy or idle daydreaming. It is the very substance of reality, the creative power of God in action. When you imagine, you are literally molding the substance of the universe according to your will. As you focus on yourself, you must learn to see yourself as you wish to be, not as you currently appear to be. This is the art of revision, of rewriting your past and present to align with your desired future. For time is merely a concept in the world of Caesar. In the realm of imagination, all is now. Imagine yourself as a person you wish to be. See yourself embodying the qualities you admire, living the life you desire. Feel the joy, the satisfaction, the fulfillment of being this version of yourself. This is not mere visualization. This is the act of entering into the state of the wish fulfilled. As you persist in this state, as you continually focus on this ideal version of yourself, you will find that your external world begins to shift. People and circumstances will rearrange themselves to match your new concept of self. Some may leave your life, while new individuals who resonate with your new state will enter. Remember, people come and go, but you, the operant power, remain constant. You are the unchanging awareness upon which all change takes place. As you focus on yourself, on your true identity as pure consciousness, you become unshakable, unmoved by the comings and goings of the external world. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Neville, I have tried to focus on myself, to imagine a better life, and yet nothing has changed. To this I sigh. Persistence is key. You must persist in the assumption that you are already the person you wish to be, that you already have what you desire. Consider the biblical story of Joshua and the walls of Jericho. For six days, Joshua and his army marched around the city walls, seemingly to no effect. But on the seventh day, as they persisted in their march and sounded their trumpets, the walls came tumbling down. Your desired state, your ideal self, is Jericho. 
the walls that seem to separate you from it are merely illusions created by your current concept of self. As you persist in your new assumption, as you continue to focus on your ideal self, these walls will inevitably crumble. But remember, the feeling is the secret. It is not enough to merely visualize or affirm your desired state. You must feel the naturalness of being in that state. You must embody the emotions, the sensations, the inner conviction of already being the person you wish to be. As you cultivate this feeling, as you make it more and more real to yourself, you will find that the external world has no choice but to conform. For the outer world is nothing more than a shadow, a reflection of your inner state of consciousness. Now, let us address the second part of our topic. People come and go. This statement holds within it a profound truth about the nature of reality and your role as the creator of your experience. In the world of Caesar, relationships appear to be external to us. We believe that people enter and leave our lives based on circumstances beyond our control. But I tell you, this is an illusion. Every person in your life is there because you have called them forth through your consciousness. You are the author of your life story, and every character in it is playing a role that you have assigned. Some are there to challenge you, to push you towards growth. Others are there to support and nurture you. Some may stay for a lifetime, while others may be present for just a moment. But understand this, no one has the power to enter or leave your life without your consent. Your consent may not be conscious in the world of Caesar, but at the level of your true self, your divine imagination, you are always in control. As you focus on yourself, as you shift your concept of self, you will naturally attract people who resonate with your new state. Those who no longer align with your new consciousness may fall away. This is not a loss but a natural consequence of your growth and evolution. Think of yourself as a radio. As you tune to a new frequency, a new station, you naturally lose reception of the old station. The old station hasn't ceased to exist. You have simply tuned to a different broadcast. Similarly, as you tune your consciousness to a new state, you naturally attract experiences and people that match that frequency. This understanding liberates you from the fear of loss or abandonment. For you realize that you're never truly losing anyone. You are simply shifting your focus, tuning to a new station that better aligns with your desired state of being. Moreover, this knowledge empowers you to consciously create the relationships you desire. Instead of seeking validation or fulfillment from others, you recognize that all relationships are reflections of your relationship with yourself. As you focus on cultivating the qualities you wish to experience in your relationships within yourself, you will naturally attract individuals who embody these qualities. For instance, if you desire a loving partnership, focus on embodying love yourself. Feel the love you wish to receive. Imagine yourself in the state of being deeply loved and appreciated. As you persist in this state, you will find that either your current relationships transform to match this new vibration, or new relationships that embody this love will enter your life. Remember, the external world is dead. It has no power to create or to destroy. All power lies within you, within your consciousness. People do not come and go of their own accord. They enter and exit the stage of your life in perfect accordance with your beliefs and assumptions. This understanding frees you from the need to manipulate or control others. You no longer need to chase after people or cling to relationships out of fear. Instead, you focus on cultivating your ideal state of being knowing that the right people and circumstances will naturally align with this state. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Neville, what about free will? Don't others have the power to choose whether they want to be in our lives? To this I say, there's only one consciousness, one God, one I am. What appears as separate individuals are merely different aspects of this one consciousness, playing different roles in the grand drama of life. Your job is not to control the actions of others, but to control your own imagination, your own assumptions. As you do this, you will find that others naturally play the roles that align with your assumption. This is not a violation of their free will, but a harmonious dance of consciousness where all parts play their perfect role in the unfolding of your creation. 
Let us delve deeper into this concept of focusing on yourself. While understanding that people come and go, imagine, if you will, that you are the director of a grand play. This play is your life. And you are not only the director, but also the lead actor. Every other character in this play, every person you encounter is there to serve the story you are telling. As the director, you have the power to rewrite the script at any moment. You can change the setting, alter the dialogue, and even replace the supporting cast. This is the essence of focusing on yourself. You are not at the mercy of the script or the other actors. You are the creator, the author of your own experience. When you truly grasp this truth, you will no longer be swayed by the comings and goings of others. You will understand that each person who enters your life is there to play a specific role in your unfolding story. Some may have leading roles that span much of your life's journey, while others may have brief camo appearances. But all are there by your invitation, someone by your consciousness to play their part. Now you may ask, but Neville, how can I control who enters and exits my life? The answer lies not in trying to manipulate external circumstances, but in changing your own state of consciousness. As you focus on embodying your desired state of being, you will naturally attract people and circumstances that align with this state. Consider the biblical story of Joseph. When he was sold into slavery by his brothers, he could have focused on resentment and victimhood. Instead, he focused on embodying leadership and wisdom. As a result, he rose to become the second most powerful man in Egypt. And even his brothers, who had wronged him, came to serve him. The story illustrates a profound truth. Your external circumstances, including the people in your life, are a reflection of your inner state. As you focus on cultivating the qualities and experiences you desire within yourself, your outer world will rearrange itself to match this inner reality. But remember, this is not about forcing change or trying to control others. It is about aligning yourself with the state of consciousness that naturally attracts your desires. It is about becoming the person who would naturally experience what you wish to experience. Let us take a moment to practice this principle. Close your eyes and imagine yourself as the person you wish to be. See yourself embodying the qualities you admire. Feel the joy, the confidence, the peace that comes with being this version of yourself. Now from this state, imagine the kind of people who would naturally be in your life. Don't try to force specific individuals into this vision. Simply feel the quality of relationships that would naturally align with this version of you. As you open your eyes, carry this feeling with you. Let it inform your interactions, your decisions, your very way of being in the world. As you persist in this state, you will find that your relationships begin to shift. Some people may fall away, while new individuals who resonate with your new state will enter your life. This is the natural ebb and flow of relationships when you are focused on your own growth and evolution. It is not something to fear or resist, but to embrace as part of your journey of self-realization. Now, let us address a common concern that arises when we speak of focusing on oneself. Some may worry that this approach is selfish or that it neglects the needs of others. But I tell you, there is no greater gift you can give to the world than to fully realize your own divine nature. As you focus on cultivating your highest self, you become a beacon of light for others. You inspire by your very being. You lift others up not through effort or sacrifice, but through the natural radiance of your realized self. Moreover, as you focus on yourself, you come to understand that there is no others to neglect. All is one. The person you see is separate from you, but another aspect of the one consciousness that you are is you elevate your own consciousness. You elevate the consciousness of all. I and my father are one. This is not a statement of egotism, but a recognition of the fundamental unity of all existence. As you focus on realizing this truth within yourself, you naturally extend love and compassion to all beings, for you recognize them as part of yourself. This understanding transforms your relationships. You no longer seek to get something from others or to change them. Instead, you see each person as a perfect expression of the divine, playing their role in the grand tapestry of existence. You love them not for what they can give you, but for what they are unique expressions of the one consciousness that you all share. From this place of self-realization, 
And unity consciousness, the coming and going of people in your life, takes on a new meaning. You understand that each encounter, each relationship is a divine appointment, orchestrated by your own consciousness for your growth and evolution. Some people may enter your life to challenge you, to push you towards greater self-awareness. Others may come to support and nurture you on your journey. Some may stay for a lifetime, while others may be present for just a moment. But all are perfect. All are necessary. All are you in different guises. As you focus on yourself, on realizing your true nature is pure consciousness, you become like a mighty oak tree. Your roots grow deep into the soil of being, unshaken by the winds of circumstance. People may come and go like leaves on your branches, but you remain steadfast, ever growing. This state of being is your birthright. It is the truth of who you are. As you align with this truth, as you focus on embodying it in every moment, you will find that your life transforms in ways you may have never imagined possible. But remember, this transformation does not happen overnight. It requires persistence, faith, and above all, the willingness to see yourself as you truly are, not as the limited mortal self, but as the infinite, immortal consciousness that is one with God. In your daily life, practice seeing beyond appearances. When you encounter another person, whether they are playing a positive or challenging role in your life, silently acknowledge the divine within them. See them not as separate from you. But as another aspect of the one consciousness that you are, as you do this, you will find that your relationships take on a new depth and meaning. You will no longer be swayed by the opinions or actions of others. For you will recognize that all as you pushed out, every person, every circumstance, is a reflection of your own consciousness. This understanding gives you tremendous power. For if all as you pushed out, then by changing yourself, you change your entire world. This is the essence of focusing on yourself. It is not about ignoring others or becoming self-absorbed. It's about recognizing that the key to transforming your life and your relationships lies within you. As you focus on embodying your higher self, as you align with the truth of your being, you will find that the right people naturally gravitate towards you. Those who resonate with your new vibration will enter your life, while those who no longer align with your energy may fall away. This process is natural and necessary. It is the universe, which is none other than your own expanded self, reorganizing itself to match your new state of consciousness. Trust in this process. Know that everyone who enters or exits your life is doing so. In perfect divine timing, serving the highest good of all involved. Now let's explore how this understanding can be applied to specific areas of your life. In your romantic relationships, for instance, Instead of seeking the perfect partner outside of yourself, focus on embodying the qualities you desire in a relationship. Feel the love, the joy, the companionship you wish to experience. As you persist in this state, you will find that either your current relationship transforms to match this new vibration, or if you're single, the right partner who embodies these qualities will naturally be drawn into your life. Remember, your outer world must conform to your inner assumptions. It is law in your professional life. Instead of striving to impress others or seeking validation from colleagues or superiors, focus on embodying the qualities of success and excellence within yourself. Feel the satisfaction of doing work you love, of being recognized for your contributions, of achieving your goals. As you persist in this state, you will find that opportunities naturally arise that align with your new self-concept. The right people, mentors, collaborators, clients, will be drawn to you, recognizing the unique value you bring. In your friendships, instead of trying to fit in or seeking approval from others, focus on being true to yourself. Embody the qualities of authenticity, loyalty, and genuine connection that you wish to experience in your relationships. As you do this, you will find that your social circle naturally evolves. Those who resonate with your authentic self will be drawn closer, while relationships based on superficial connections may fall away. This is not a loss, but a realignment that allows for deeper, more meaningful connections in all areas of your life. Remember that your focus determines your reality. 
where you place your attention, your energy flows by focusing on yourself, not the limited self of the ego, but your true self as pure consciousness. You align with the creative power of the universe.